this is Jill from the North Woods. I wanted to give you an introduction to my new podcast, The Bible in Small Steps, and what you can expect. This came about with a decision where I wanted to do a deep dive into the Bible. I have done two last year, The Bible in a Year podcast. One from Father Mike Schmitz, which I enjoyed quite a bit. I'm not Catholic, but I enjoyed learning more from the Catholic point of view about what they think the Bible means and says and what kind of things we can learn from it. And the other one is the Bible Recap from Terry Lee Cobble. Both of them I like quite a bit. But one of the things I noticed is that to keep up, I found myself struggling to get it in, to get everything read on time. And sometimes I got behind, I had trips and things. And so I never got to sit there and look things up. Maybe there was something that was said I didn't know about or I wanted to learn more. But both of them are fantastic. And to get done with the Bible in a year, which is like 1,189 chapters, you have to go at a pretty good clip. I wanted to do something that was a little bit deeper for myself. I wanted to be able to spend time, check out the passage, understand what it meant, maybe look at maps and do some other types of research for it. And if you do a year in the Bible, you get behind. It's hard to catch up. So again, I was going to do this on my own. And then I thought, hey, you're a podcaster. What if we did this as a podcast? People could listen to it, offer their own opinions. If they think I got something wrong. They think I got something right. Or if they found something particular interesting, people get back to me and tell me what they thought. If there was something wrong, I can do a correction about it and we'll all learn together. I have no theological education other than being a good researcher who has the ability to look things up. I have a lot of books when it comes to the Bible. I also happen to have the Logo software. And the Logo software, once you customize it, does amazing things. I can look up a particular chapter or verse in the Bible and have an array of information come out about it. What was the Greek? What was the Hebrew? What was the background? What's the meaning? I can have commentaries. I can look at it in many different versions of the Bible. So while I don't have that formal education, I do have a lot of tools. I also fundamentally believe that a majority of the Bible can be understood by a regular person without a theology degree or that background. There are some tricky parts for sure in the Bible. And at that point, I'm going to recommend that if you find this particular area tricky, talk to a priest, talk to a pastor, talk to a church elder and see if you can get some help with it. But I think a majority of it will be able to get through, understand, and gain value from it, learn about God. But just because I believe that every person can read the Bible, that there's no deep secrets, there's no coded messages, except for the one part where it says this is a coded message, I'm not going to take it lightly either. I want to do a good job, and I want to get it right. And it's very important to me to do that. What I wanted to understand the Bible better. I wanted to understand what God wants from us, what we should want from ourselves. The story of humanity, too, is in this book. People are very real in the story. It's interesting to see that even people way back in the day, in the end, are still people. Even if the technologies are different, the things that they have, the lifestyle that they have are different, these are still real people. So the first thing to know is that this takes a while to go through the Bible a chapter at a time. I'm planning on this being three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And then that means on Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, you'll be able to do your own reading. And that will give you time to study it, look things up, and understand what's important in this particular chapter. So the whole idea of it is to give you time so that you can do as deep a dive as you want to do. I believe in the Bible that there are certain events, and some of them are meant to be descriptive. Some of them are meant to be prescriptive, meaning they're being told to do something. And of those things that are prescriptive, where something is told to someone to do, some of those are to individual people, and some of those are to all of us. All of us should be doing those things. And I'll try to highlight those passages and say where this was really meant for this one person or if this was meant for everybody. Think of David and Bathsheba. That is obviously descriptive. No one's supposed to do that. Or if Jesus tells John the Baptist, baptize me, we're not supposed to baptize him. This was specific instruction to a specific human being. And again, if you are a 
person who's never known anything about the Bible and wanted to get a good idea of what it means, what's happening in there, that's what we're going to do here. Or if you're someone who is like me, been in the church for a long time, but just never did a deep dive into the Bible as slowly as this one's going to be, I hope you'll find this exciting. Or if you're an expert and you know a lot, then chime in and help the rest of us know exactly what it is we're looking at. Maybe, too, you'll find new things as well. When it comes to differences of opinion, my goal is not to take anyone out, yell at anyone, or slam a particular viewpoint. Again, I have my own viewpoint. The idea is that if we get a passage where there are different takes on it, think Luke twenty-two nineteen, where it talks about the body and blood of Christ in communion, I'll point out that this is a place where people disagree what it means. I'm not going to beat anyone over the head with it either. I believe that there are places where there's disagreement about what the passage means, and we're just going to go through the Bible and keep things sensible if we can. And hopefully this is slow enough, too, so that if you go on vacation, you're out for a little bit, you'll be able to come back from whatever it is that caused you a delay, and you'll be able to get back into the swing of things. If I didn't mention it before, we are going to start with the New Testament. And we're going to go starting through Matthew and go all the way through the New Testament. And then we'll go through the Old Testament. I also carved out Proverbs, Psalms, Song of Solomon, and Ecclesiastes and put those all at the end, primarily because I want to get the nature of the story as a coherent story in one place. And all the pieces of wisdom and poetry and song are important, and they will add to our understanding. They're written by many different people. But I think to have those at the end, we will be able to understand them better because we've read the entire Bible already at that point. And it will help keep the consistency of the story going because we won't get these interruptions. By the way, when I was working on the schedule, I know now why every church service or Sunday school or the Jewish service or whatever service you have put Psalms one at a time. It is an intimidating sized book, <laughs> but we will catch it at the very end once we've gone through the entire Bible. I think a lot of the Bible is now given to us is a gift from God. Back in the time when people were living in the Bible times, they didn't have the Bible written down. It was oral tradition. There were prophets. There were apostles. There were travelers who would tell you things from it. But we have this gift of having the Bible. And for the time that it was written down, a majority of mankind either couldn't read or it was in a language nobody could read or very few people could read. We are given such a gift that from the late 1800s, we have the Bible in our languages and we can read it for ourselves. There's no gatekeeper. There's no one telling us what we have to read or which parts we can read. We can read it all. If you've ever been curious or the last time you really did a deep dive in the Bible was when you were in Sunday school and you were a child, I went to Saturday school, I was Jewish growing up, there might be pieces of information we know and parts of the story we didn't know. I've been learning so much just doing the year in the Bible. I now like to learn a little bit more. And if you're interested, I did a Small Steps with God that goes over the different translations. The idea is that some of the translations are very literal. But sometimes then they use concepts and words that are hard to understand. There are other translations that try to help you understand by using common phrases, but then they may divert from the actual core meaning of what was being said in the name of making sure you understand it. There is a range there. So I will put a link in the show notes to that podcast so you can figure out if you don't have a translation that you like, which translation might make sense for you. But you're also always welcome to email me about the translations and I can offer some suggestions. So I made up a worksheet that you can download. It's going to be on my website and I'll give you the links in the show notes. And that website is going to be thebibleinsmallsteps.com. Makes sense. But I came up with the acronym RAMPS, which means read, analyze. What does this chapter mean? The analyze part, I'm going to fill out with all my tools. But again, this is going to be a Word document. You can fill out more details, and you can use it for your own research. M stands for meditate. So what does this mean to me? What does this mean to me for my behavior, my actions, what I think about God? And then the next one is prayer. So how am I going to pray for myself? How am I going to pray for other people? 
Are there things I'm thankful for or things I'm worried about based on this passage? And then the last part is ask for share. So what information am I going to share with other people? What information am I going to share with my pastor, my priest, my elders, in case I have questions? And that's the ramps dialogue, thinking that we have the Bible as ramps up to God so that we understand him more. I'm also going to include a link to a Notion database. I'll come up with a tip sheet so that you'll understand how it works. But basically, think of it as a Excel spreadsheet, workbook kind of thing that you'll be able to look at and see the information together. So every chapter will have its own page. It'll have a link to the podcast in case you want to listen to it on the web instead of listening to it on a podcast app. It will have some information about the chapters, and then it will parse things out. For example, if a chapter has John the Baptist, there will be a John the Baptist page that will show you all the passages that it's in. I'm not going into so much detail where I'm creating a concordance, but this is the idea of us being able to learn the story so that you'll be able to refer to things, download the worksheets, or also listen to the podcast. So that'll be available to you too. This is going to get populated as we go. So it's not filled out right now because we haven't done the deep dive study yet. But as we go down and do all the books, this will get filled out. But I wanted to give you something where you could do a head start with it too. Also, if you have a Notion account, it's free. I allowed it so that you can download the entire database. Now, here's the problem with that. You're welcome to have it. You're welcome to fill it out and copy this Notion database to your own account. But as I fill it out, it's going to get more and more data. So you're going to get parts of the data from the day that you copied it. So you can keep copying it. And, you know, <laughs> a year from now, we've done more work, copy it away or copy individual pages over for it. Because I love Notion so much, I'm an affiliate and there will be links in the show notes if you want to get your own account. I, at this point, opened up comments on the Notion database so that you can comment there. You can also comment on the blog article and say things. I want it to be productive. I don't want name calling. I have my own view about the Bible and how literal it is and how it works, but I will allow comments of all kinds, just no name calling, anything not productive. But keep it nice and just talk to each other. Talk about the Bible or this passage, or again, if I got something right or got something wrong. Also, if you have anything that you want me to pray for you about, I'm happy to do it. And if you want me to bring it out to the entire group to pray for you, you can tell me what name you want to use or you want it to be anonymous, whatever you like. I'm happy to pray for you and have the community pray for you as well. You're always welcome to email me at jill at the Bible in small steps.com. There might be some overlap too with Small Steps with God. The podcast is also a religious podcast, but we'll have time to do more deep dives into topics. Like I wrote a podcast about the Magi. I won't have time in the Bible in Small Steps podcast to talk about topics. So when there's a topic that I think could use a little bit more illumination, I will do in Small Steps with God an introduction to the Magi, who was Herod the Great, those kinds of things. And so we'll be able to take those conversations offline into the other podcast so we can get, do a deeper dive about it. In the show notes, I'm going to have links to the episode notes, the blog article, on my website and my Twitter handle, my email account. You can email me and contact me, whatever your thoughts are, and then I'll include them in what we're learning about. I have to tell you, this is a big undertaking. I have the schedule for this podcast up on the Notion database, and this is a long time because it takes a long time to go through these chapters three times a week. I'll also put an Excel spreadsheet or a Word document available for you to download on my website so you can see what the schedule is going to be. So again, if you're going to be out of town, you're going to need to catch up, or you just want to know where this is all going, you'll be able to see it either on the Word document or the spreadsheet. You see what happens when nerds do Bible studies? They give you all the document types. So again, I'm not a pastor, nor would I ever become a pastor, but I think people can read the Bible. And just like I did with Small Steps with God, I wanted to do a bit of a disclaimer. I wanted to ask, basically, that we give each other grace. I think that because it's the Bible, people tend to be a lot less forgiving than they do about a lot of things. They hear one thing that they disagree with, and suddenly you're a heretic. We're all 
trying to get through the Bible and understand it and be together on this. Most things most Christians agree with, I'd say probably like 90% of the Bible. And then there are some passages here and there that we do disagree with. So as I said before, I don't have theological education. I am an educated person. I'm a good researcher, but I also might and will make mistakes. I hope to correct them once someone brings them to my attention or I find out more information later. And if I say something wrong, I may not be making some kind of a doctrinal statement about it. It may be that I was just wrong. People are flawed. I'm flawed too. You're flawed as well. And so if we just talk to each other, I think we'll do a lot better. I hope in the end that I do speak true. I hope that I cover and I talk about things in a truthful way and that I don't make mistakes. That's my goal. I do take the Bible very seriously and I want to do a great job with that. And that's not to say that sometimes I'll mess up my words. That happens in podcasting in general, even when you're not making great theological statements. And so that's why I encourage you that if there's a passage that you think I'm wrong, do your own research. Talk to your pastor, your priest, your elder. Talk to someone who knows something, maybe went through Bible school. I have some people in my own life that I'll do that with as well. But don't walk away from this podcast confused. Walk away with questions that you intend on getting answered. I became a Christian when I was in college. Essentially, I was raised Jewish. I never really believed it. And I became an atheist quickly as soon as I could think about things on my own, probably somewhere around 11 or 12. My last year of being a Jewish atheist, I went to Israel. I spent two summers in Israel, and that was probably my turning point. I found things that were stunning. I talked to people who were there. I saw things with my own eyes. I'm going to talk a little bit about that in the podcast too, but I never went to Sunday school. I went to Saturday school. So my knowledge of Judaism is strong. I learned Hebrew. I took three years of it in college, and I went to Israel and talked to people live in Hebrew. So I know Hebrew pretty well, although I'm, you know, rusty. It's been a while since I was in college, but I'm going to bring a different viewpoint to that. Some of you have been to Sunday school. You've known some things your whole life. Let me know if there's something I'm not getting right. I'm trying to set up a framework where we can all learn something, and that's going to be me too. And hopefully you'll learn something. And again, we'll all run out to our experts and try to talk things over. We're not going to beat people on the head for things. And we're going to try to work things out together. I believe that adults can have good conversations. So again, I'm just asking for your forgiveness, your prayers, your grace, and a little bit of patience. If you think I got something wrong, let me know. There was a fellow who thought I got something wrong on Small Steps with God. And then I talked about it in the next podcast about what his point was on the verse I was reading and left it to everyone to decide whether it was my reading or his reading. But I am happy with dissenting views. The idea is if you stick with me, we're going to learn a lot and we're going to walk away from this understanding a lot more about the Bible and a lot more about the places where we have questions. So I'm excited to get started with it. I hope you enjoy it. If you have any sort of comments that would make this podcast more enjoyable or more educational for you, please let me know. In the end, I'm excited. I can't wait to get started going over the Bible in small steps with you. We are going to start on January 8th, Matthew 1. So again, this is Jill from the Northwoods, and I hope you enjoy this podcast. Mm-hmm.